Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and dear colleagues. I, I would like to, first, I would like to thank the organizing committee for the privilege of the podium presentation here. I will be presenting our experience with advanced endoscopic techniques at the Cleveland Clinic, Ohio. We have no disclosures. Screening colonoscopy and with polypectomy has been shown to decrease the incidence of colorectal cancer and its related mortality. While most of the colorectal polyps can be removed with snare polypectomy, some lesions may not be suitable for endoscopic removal. Up to 15% of the lesions require further management, including surgery or advanced techniques. However, large amount of the lesions uh, are still referred for resection. So we were thinking that there should be another uh, site walls for the preserving of the colon for these specific patients. Recently, we conducted a study at the Cleveland Clinic to estimate the cancer risk in these patients for uh, with a benign and uh, endoscopic unresectable colonic polyps and referred for surgery. So during the 15-year-old study period, period we, we identified around 440 patients and uh, who underwent colectomy at our institution uh, which were deemed unresectable uh, for the endoscopic removal. And we found that only 8.4% uh, uh, of the patients had cancer in the final pathology. However, for more than 90% of these patients, uh, for these patients, oncological uh, colorectal resection was as an overtreatment and carried all the potential risk factors related to surgery. So therefore, advanced polypectomy techniques have been proposed to remove these large colorectal polyps. So in this study, we aim to report our technique and experience with advanced endoscopic techniques for patients with endoscopically unresectable colorectal lesions. So after obtaining the institutional review board approval, a retrospective review was conducted for all patients referred for colorectal resection for benign appearing histologically proven premalignant lesions, but deemed un endoscopically unresectable by conventional endoscopic techniques between 2011 and 2015. Patients were concealed for ESD with possible combined endoscopic laparoscopic or alternatively colorectal resection if unable to resect endoscopically during the OR. And if they have, we have the suspicion for cancer with either grossly or with a frozen section. Demographics, demographics, histopathological results, intraoperative and postoperative outcomes, and postoperative complications were reviewed and assessed for these patients. And follow up colonoscopy was performed at six months after the uh, procedure. For the ESC procedure, after establishment of the general anesthesia, the patient was positioned in the bonified lithotomy as shown on the left side. And the, left, uh, the leg extension of portion of the surgical table was left in the place to maintain a stable counter space during the advanced endoscopic procedure. And the right side is showing the uh, combined endolaparoscopic procedure with the both screens for colonoscope and laparoscope. And in this, also in this slide, the position of the both screens for colonoscope and laparoscope was seen. So the ESD technique involves several basic steps. The first, the lesion is delineated and identified. The, to perform the ESD technique safely, it's necessary to expand the submucosal space to perform a plane for dissection between mucosa and muscular layer. Our preference for the injection, injection solution is the delayed hybromillar solution with a saline and mixed small amounts of indigocarmine or metal and blue dye. The blue discolorization of the Submucosal plane provides better visualization uh, and for the structures and the submucosal layer. After submucosal in injection, the cir circumferential incision was performed first and uh, beginning from the proximal border, and half of the circumference is incised, and submucosal dissection is performed. And cir circumferential incision is then completed the half of the other side of the lesion, and the submucosa is completely dissected from the distal end. And resected and Envelope uh, specimen is retrieved uh, through the complete, uh, after the complete dissection. So, in this current study, we identified a total uh, a, a total of 110 patients uh, were scheduled and identified for ESD and advanced endolaparoscopic surgery with a median age of 64 years. 50% uh, of the patients were female, and the median BMI is 29.6. Uh, and median perioperative colonoscopy polyp size was around 3 cm, and 90% of these lesions were sessile, and 10% were pedunculated. 
Most of the colorectal lesions were located in the right colon, with majority being in the cecum, ascending colon, and transverse colon. So as a, as, a, as a diagram, I want to show the operative approach for these patients that we performed during the war. So around like three, 110 patients were scheduled for advanced endoscopic surgery, and successful endoscopic resection rate was around 88.2%. And of these patients, uh, of these patients, the EST was completed without laparoscopy in 69 patients and 28 patients uh, underwent combined endolaparoscopic surgery. And only six patients in the EST, take EST group had the diagnostic laparoscopy for possible perforation, which we didn't perform any surgery. And for this group, only uh, three patients had a subsequent at the same stage colectomy for the cancer. And out of 28 patients, in the combined endoscopic group, uh, only the uh, 23 patients have the laparoscopic repair and five patients have the wedge resection. And in this group, only one patient have the requ required colectomy for the cancer. And out of these 110 patients, the 13 patients required colectomy for technical reasons or carcinoma at the same stage. And as a total, we have around like 9.1% of the patients have the cancer identified in this group, which the number is quite similar to, to uh, compared to our previous study. So median operative time around like two hours and median length of stay is one day and the overall complication rate was around 11.8%, which including delayed bleeding, delayed perforation and readmission for surgical site infection. And during a median uh, follow-up period of around 16 months, two patients have the adenoma uh, uh, recurrence at the same location where we performed the procedure. For the limitations of the study, uh, this sample size is relatively small and our institutional experience may not be translatable to other centers at this stage due to the evolving nature of these new techniques, uh, which has been limited to US. And also the follow-up uh, is around like 16 months, which may not, may not be su uh, sufficient to assess the long-term oncological effectiveness of these uh, advanced in techniques in terms of recurrence rate. I'll Additionally, it's a single uh, surgeon and endoscopist uh, experience, which may not introduce other, uh, which may introduce other bias for selection criteria, including patients for advanced endoscopic surgery. As a conclusion, Mr. Chairman and colleagues, advanced endoscopic surgery appears to be safe and effective alternative to colectomy for patients with complex colorectal lesions deemed unresectable with conventional endoscopic techniques, and these. Uh, with the more training courses and further refinement of the colorectal advanced, uh, advanced uh, endoscopy uh, instruments that we use will change the practice in the future. And as a conclusion with Dr. Gurgun, we are saying for this patient, we need to save the colon. Thank you. Question. Yeah, thank you for that uh, fantastic talk. Um, mm -hmm. This is really a, you know, we're starting to see a sea change in how we're thinking about these patients with early stage lesions. One of the questions that's outstanding is around staging the patient appropriately. So they're deemed endoscopically benign, but that may not be the case. In fact, I think the first paper that you showed, there were some patients with stage one and stage two cancers in that paper. Sure. When you look, when you, um, do you have the pathology support to ascertain lymphovascular invasion, absence, or presence so that you can make a decision around doing a subsequent colectomy or not if there, if there is lymph, uh, lymphatic invasion? Uh, thank you for the question. Definitely, we have that support in our department and in our institution to give a, a, deci a, de a decision regarding there's a lymphovascular invasion or other findings that may relate to cancer, uh, including SMV 1 and 2 and 3. So uh, Dr. Gorgon doing a, a frozen section for this patient and assess, and then if he thinks that he, that patient is a colectomy, for based on these findings, he is proceeding with colectomy. Okay, thank you. I think there's a discrepancy right now between Asia and, and here in the U.S. And, and, and Europe around the 
type of, the, you know, the, the scrutiny with which some of these specimens are, are, are examined. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. We're out of time. Great job. Uh, thank you very much. Would you allow me to answer so we, we don't yes. leave anything unanswered? Yes. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the, the, the study results, though, we, we, if we found cancer, invasive cancer, all the time, we did the colectomy. Uh, if there's a gross suspicion, then a uh, frozen section was uh, sent, and, and if, if that was con 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 if that confirmed the cancer, then we did a colectomy. Uh, but if we, are, if we were able to successfully remove the lesions uh, in an N-block fashion, and the final pathology was invasive cancer with SM1, uh, T, so in other words, T, T1, SM1, even in the United States, then we don't, uh, there's no need uh, for a, a oncological colorectal resections. That's consistent with Asia. There's no difference from that perspective. Uh, the problem is, uh, in, in, in the United States, we're not able to do uh, suspicious lesions or high-risk lesions uh, remove this way uh, in the endoscopic submucosal dissection. Otherwise, yeah. also in Asia, if it's uh, beyond SM2, uh, the recommendation is colectomy in Asia as well. Thank you very much.